on the realization of some degenerate automorphic forms in a certain Griffith Schmidt variety. Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, invi inviting me to this uh, to give a talk to this seminar. Um, first, I'm going to begin with some uh, motivation to explain what I'm trying to do. And of course, I do cannot do uh, what I want to do exactly. So. If one starts with a classical modular form of weight one, um, to such a thing, <coughs> the linear answer have associated a two-dimensional Artin representation of uh, the Galois group of Q bar over Q. Artin means that one uh, lands into uh, GL2 of C, so it's not alladic. And those representations obtained in this way are odd. The, uh, the complex conjugacy acts uh, by uh, determinant minus one. And now with the uh, SER conjectures, one knows that it is a bijection between the two sets. And so the question is <coughs> what corresponds to even representation? So <coughs> by the general uh, Langlands philosophy, she should correspond to some kind of mass form. Uh, so <coughs> in this situation, a mass form is simply an analytic function C infinity function, real analytic, on the quotient of the point carré upper half plane by uh, some uh, uh, congruent subgroup, which are eigenvalues of the Laplacian corresponding to the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue one fourth. And the truth correspond even dimensional to, uh, to even uh, two dimensional representations and that should be a bijection but at present uh, nothing is uh, really known about this so the mass form are quite mysterious objects from the point of view of uh, automorphic representation uh, one can read the the weight or the type of the form of the, on the Archimedean component. And this corresponds to a limit of discrete series. Uh, and this is a principal series uh, representation. <coughs> so <coughs> my, uh, my idea is what one get when is a slightly better situation if one goes to uh, GL3. So, so if one takes such a representation and one apply the SIM2 functorality, SIM2 functorality corresponds on the Galois side simply to the sim, uh, so symmetric, second symmetric power. And if you start from a uh, mass form, so representation of a mass type. You, you get a representation of GL3. <coughs> which, are, which has uh, good uh, duality properties. Uh, and that you can descend to uh, some unitary group. So you, you, I want a group of type. So you get some representation of, of U to one. And with uh, infinite uh, uh, Archimedean type, uh, a limit of a degenerate limit of discrete series. Unramified. Everywhere unramified mass subform. 
You mean uh, at the finite prim primes? Uh, I guess in the quota, it would be just pretty much finite. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I take back what I said. OK. Sorry. <coughs> so I think um, we could be in a slightly better situation because we get something which is a sort of li the limit of discrete series, but of degenerate type. So it's not so uh, good. I will re recall the Arish Chandra parametrization. So the discrete series for a, for a group which has discrete series, that means uh, you, you have to, to get a compact uh, maximal torus. Discrete series correspond to some weights which are uh, regular and integral up to uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, twist. But the important point is that they have to be regular. <coughs> and this is modulo uh, the compact veil group, veil with a uh, y. That means the group which is generated by reflection with respect to compact roots. So for anything like this, you get some discrete series. And <coughs> the limit, uh, lambda is allowed to go to the walls but uh, in a fixed chamber. And the condition is that lambda should not be orthogonal to a compact simp simple root for a psi, psi root. And <coughs> if it is uh, orthogonal to no compact root, simple or not, then one says that, so this, this depends on, on psi, and if it, it is non-degenerate. So degenerate things are those, uh, correspond to those lambda, which are orthogonal to some compact root, but not to a compact simple root with respect to the chamber uh, you, you consider. And I am uh, I'm going to, to, to draw the picture for U21. So for U21, you have uh, three pairs of roots. One is compact, and the other one are non-compact. So let me call E1 the compact root. So the, the, the root uh, diagram looks I put only three, uh, three of them on the opposite. The compact wall is this one. So you have three. The, the compact veil group is simply the reflection with respect to this uh, thing. And you have three, uh, three chambers on each side. One corresponds to holomorphic discrete series. The other one to the anti-holomorphic one and the middle chamber to the non-holomorphic discrete series. So you are allowed in the holomorphic chamber to go to this wall because it is not orthogonal to a compact root, but you are not allowed to go to this one because uh, the root E1 is simple with respect to the chamber you consider. So you can go there, but not here. And the same here. And for the non-holomorphic discrete series, you can go everywhere. And in particular, you can go to zero, because 
this is in, on the compact wall, but for this chamber, uh, there are no, uh, no compact simple roots. The simple roots are, uh, with re, uh, are those two roots here. And uh, so you have this D0 is a uh, degenerate limit. And this is the representation we are going to, to consider in this talk. <coughs> so <coughs> for the situation is the following so the fact is that uh, discrete series and non-degenerate limit, for instance, uh, forms of weight one correspond to a non-degenerate limit because there is no compact root in this case, uh, occur in the cohomology, in the coherent cohomology. of Shimura varieties. And in fact, if you have discrete series, even occur in the uh, Eladic cohomology, if you want. But for non-degenerate, for limits, you have to consider the cohomology with respect to a coherent sheaf. And <coughs> it's, uh, they occur in the, but, but degenerate limits, do not occur. This is a result of Mirkovic. And so the, <coughs> the observation which, which was at the beginning of this uh, work is the following fact. Uh, so <coughs> I think it's true in general, at least it's true for unitary groups. Uh, degenerate limit do occur I mean representation of uh, with uh, Archimedean uh, uh, component uh, degenerate limit of discrete series do occur in the coherent cohomology of, of what I call Griffith-Schmidt varieties So what is the Griffiths mean variety? This can be defined by the same data as for Shimura variety. So the uh, a morphism from the, uh, the group, uh, the restriction of scalars from uh, GM from C to R into the real point of the group, which, which satisfies the uh, same condition, except that one uh, removes the condition that the Lie algebra uh, is of type, of edge type, uh, wi with weight m m minus one, plus one. So this condition is removed. And when you get in, when you do that, you get something which looks uh, more or less like a Shimura variety, which I write here in, um, as a connected thing. You can do that adelically also if you want. Uh, with omega, uh, something which is called a period domain. This is an open uh, set, an open uh, uh, thing in some uh, flag variety. And gamma is some uh, congruent subgroup in the group G uh, for some arithmetic structure. And those varieties th th parametrize some odd structure. Mm. 
with additional data. So it's, it's quite like a Shimura variety. But there is a big difference is that uh, the, 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 the system of all structure you get here is not a variation in general. That means the Griffiths transversality condition is not satisfied. And uh, what is very annoying for the, the thing we want to do is that, in general, this thing is not algebraic. This question is not algebraic in general. And uh, in fact, yes. When you see organic cohomology, you assume compact cohomology? No, not necessarily. But I, I do not have a very good uh, definition of what parabolic means. On the, this, uh, so so when it is, if it is uh, compact, it's clear. If it is not, I have to take the Im image of the. I, I, I do not have a uh, uh, very convenient definition of uh, what parabolic means. Yes. Okay, so. so they occur in a, uh, the cohomology of the modular curve with respect to the shift uh, small omega one, which simply is the definition of a modular form of, of white wine. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So I will, I will uh, draw the picture of what uh, happens for, so in the case of, G of uh, uh, the only case I'm going to consider is the case of uh, SU21 or U21, but I prefer to take, uh, not to bother with the determinant. So <coughs> uh, this group operates on the projective pla plane by uh, homographic transformation <coughs> and it leaves invariant the open unit ball which is defined as this uh, inequality the usual Shimura variety in this situation is uh, are the quotient of delta by uh, some congruence uh, subgroups, and they are called uh, Picard modular surfaces. When <coughs> if you want to see the Griffith-Schmidt variety in this situation, so. It also operates on the, f on the set of flags so a flag is simply uh, the datum of a point on the line so it's a flag in the naive sense and on the set of flags I am going to call uh, omega chesh a set of flags. In omega stretch, we have three open ob orbits. Uh, which I'm going to, to draw. So, <coughs> and th there are also some uh, non-open orbits, but I'm uh, only going to consider the open orbits. So, I'm going to call x the, the set of flags like this, that means that the point is inside, the, this is the ball, the unit ball. The point is inside the ball and the line uh, does uh, what she wants. Uh, here, <coughs> the, this is the opposite situation, everything is external to the, to the ball. And the, there is a third open orbit where the point is outside the ball and the line intersects, uh, intersects 
So, and I'm going to call this orbit omega. So you can you can make the three quotients by uh, an arithmetic subgroup, and the two first are simply. So if you look at the first one, it is fibered uh, over <coughs> the the Picard modular surface with fibers uh, P ones. Simply, you send uh, the flag <coughs> on the point, and <coughs> it's the same for Y. Y is a uh, is a complex conjugate of the of the other one. You you have the uh, Hermitian forms with send a flag like that to a send a <coughs> flag like uh, uh, of in Y. So when you consider X and Y. You get nothing new, uh, especially simply you get some uh, fiber space over the Picard modular surface, and the cohomology of that is simply uh, can be expressed in uh, terms of uh, classical automorphic form. So you, you don't really get anything new. And in situation, the, the Griffith variety is is uh, the third question. All the three are uh, uh, topologically the same. Uh, there is a, a synfinity isomorphism be between all the, the three things. And of course, the complex structures are different. And this one is, uh, uh, so you get an analytic variety, which is compact if gamma is a co-compact group, but uh, which is non-algebraic. So the problem, of course, is the non-algebraicity of that. Concerning the cohomology, so what you get, so wait, when you want to compute the cohomology, uh, as, as in the classical case of Shimura variety, the computation of the cohomology uh, amounts to a computation of Lie algebra cohomology. So, <coughs> at least uh, in, the, in the case of compact quotient, you get something like this. So, there are some line bundles. I, I'm going to explain what they are. And you get uh, the computation of the cohomology in terms of Lie algebra cohomology. If, if the uh, question is not compact, you have to be careful. Uh, but for a moment, I suppose this is compact. So here, T is a diagonal torus. Mu is the character of the torus. And it defines <coughs> a, sh a line bundle L mu. And n is the following Lie uh, algebra. It's the Lie algebra of matrix C of this form. And <coughs> uh, when you when you express the uh, the, the omega chesh as a quotient, um, this is the Unipotent radical of the parabolic, uh, which is the kernel of, of which is uh, uh, the action factors through, through this parabolic, and uh, so so you so you have this equality, and when you compute, you get the following uh, picture for omega over gamma. We have gamma on the right. Uh, uh, you can, I don't know. There's no, uh, no special. Uh, this is gamma. This is gamma. Okay. Uh, 
T operates on this, and you take the mu. So you, you get the following according to mu. Uh, so you can put the mu in the, in the diagram of uh, the Lie algebra of, uh, of the torus, and you get the following picture. So here it's not zero, it's E1, the compact root. And uh, you get, here you get nothing. And in the other, uh, so the, in the other translates of Chambers, you get commerge in degree one, two, one, two. So that is what you get. And the, 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 the degenerate limit occurs in H1 and H2 of, at this point, you get the degenerate limit. And you get, of course, the, 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 this, the so the at at any point which is integral in this uh, diagram, you get commerge in the in the degree uh, except on the walls where you get two degrees, and this corresponds to the corresponding representations up to the shift by e1. So if you want to know lambda, you have to to translate back from e1. So the, the representation we want to consider can be realized in the coherent commodity of that. And more, moreover, so, uh, that I, so there is a theorem that uh, 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 it, it interacts with uh, with holomorphic and anti-holomorphic forms. That means the f so you can you can try to do cup product, and you have little choice to get something which is non-zero. If you want to to make the cup product um, uh, with uh, the form which is here, if you, t if you, start, if you start with uh, a commodity class in L mu, you are going to go uh, in L mu plus E1. So the only choice you have is to be on this line, the, the discrete series and the anti-holomorphic, uh, the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic discrete series, which are the close, uh, in the closest the closest as possible of the compact wall, but they exist, and in fact they correspond to uh, simply uh, 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 Picard modular forms in the usual sense. And what, what <coughs> can one can prove is that the cup products you do there, there, so you go from here to here, are non-zero. So if you t if you start with something which is non-zero in H1 of Fe1. And something which is non-zero in uh, f mu, where mu is here, you get the, the cup product is non-zero. Of course, this, this, this statement cannot be true. This is non-zero up to uh, virtually that means that you you may have to apply some echo operators to C or C prime before it, uh, otherwise, of course, it could be zero. So I have a realization of those forms and interaction with the classical forms. And it can be, stat uh, the statement can be made a, a little bit different. You can take a form here, which is an holomorphic and anti-holomorphic, and make the cup product and you go into the H2 of uh, at the same point, and the, the cup product generates so this H2. So uh, you have a generating system 
in the H2 of uh, corresponding to the degenerate series, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, in the H2. So the, si the, the <laughs> next thing I want to uh, explain is the correspondence. Oh, how is what? Uh, oh, sorry. The, I'm sorry. This is L. And you go into the L nu plus E1. I'm sorry for the one. The cup product is here. So you. I copy this picture here. So this is for omega. So you have commodities in degrees 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. If you look at the same thing, and the center is E1. If you look at the same thing for uh, x, you have, again, commodity which appear, except uh, you have nothing at the, at the center. You don't have the... Uh, the degenerate limit do, do not occur. So the center here, the shift is quite is a little bit different. Except for that, the degrees of cohomology are the following. According so the, <coughs> the fact that there is no zero here corresponds to the fact that there is no there is no automorphic form in the classical uh, sense on omega. So that's, that's the reason for which it's not algebraic. In, not algebraic, there are no uh, usual automorphic form. And for uh, y, we have a, uh, a dual picture. Uh, so this is again one and two, but this is zero, one, uh, three, and two. And The, the, the fact, uh, so one can construct uh, maps between uh, uh, commodity spaces So those maps are going to go from H i of one space into the H i plus one of another space whenever it is possible. That, do, that doesn't mean anything, but for instance, <laughs> if you if you are in this quarter, in this uh, chamber, you can go from here to here. And here you can go from here to here. You have to shift the de commodity degree for wa from one. And here you, you, you go from here to here. That means the following. If you start, so I am going to consider this thing here. For instance, I am going to call this P. Uh, P uh, go from the commodity, from the uh, Automorphic forms on X uh, into F mu, L mu, sorry, into H1. The, the, I denote the shifts by the same letters, but the, the, the variety is not the same, so the shifts are not the same. And there is a shift which is. Uh, 
you have plus E1, plus E2, I think, here. So whenever you have, uh, uh, whenever you are as at some point, uh, at some point here, you have a naturally defined map. Uh, uh, so I, I'm going to, defi to define P, P of F, uh, is given by the following formula. This is a formula in uh, Dolbo cohomology. So where uh, uh, I am at a point, so the is a point of omega. I, I take I to be the dual, to, to be the orthogonal of Z uh, on, the, on the line L. And there is a way to normalize. Uh, I mean, I don't not only want a point, but I want a, the coordinates. So to normalize this, I, I impose the condition that that uh, z i and anything should be equal, equal to l of anything and eta one is uh, a dif uh, can it's a differential invariant differential corresponding of type zero one corresponding to the, to the application of n to c, which shows to y. So this is anti-holomorphic tangent space to the, to the variety I consider. And if I give a linear form, I get an anti-holomorphic uh, uh, anti differential, which is invariant on the group, so it goes to the quotient. And this is simply this product. I have analogous formulas for all the, all the maps you can imagine. You can do, go from here to here and from here to here, for instance. And the proposition is that uh, all those maps uh, at mu corresponding to discrete series So of course, it will not be the case for the degenerate limit, are uh, isomorphism. Uh, so in the compact case. If it is not compact, I have to restrict on a parabolic form. <coughs> and okay, so you, I have uh, all those maps, and the the question is: uh, Is it possible to is it possible to so I, what what one wants at the uh, at the end is some kind of rationality? Uh, is it possible to define the rationality? Uh, so the under the main question is. To say what, what they are uh, all compatible. This, this completely naturally defined, so it's compatible with the uh, echo operators. And <coughs> uh, so the only thing I understand more or less from Mont is uh, in what to what corresponds to holomorphic an anti-holomorphic uh, discrete series. So, of course, here one knows what uh, uh, rational means. 
and the the more stupid idea is to to take this map and to transfer the rationality from one uh, space to the other one and to say uh, if I if it can be uh, uh, if it can be uh, expressed in more geometric terms and in the what correspond to holomorphic and anti holomorphic discrete series this can be done so i want to explain uh, how it is possible to do that <coughs> So basically, there are two, uh, from, a, uh, from a practical point of view, there are two ways to express the rationality uh, in, a, in, the classical, in the classical case. This can be done either by looking at Fourier expansion, or a special value. at CM points, so this is for a classical Shimura uh, variety. Here, an omega, uh, this, can, this has a meaning, so an omega. Uh, so to look at Fourier expansion, you have to, to get a some uh, kind of compactification. And Kato and Usui have constructed some compactification. In fact, there's not compactification. They call that uh, partial compactification. They just add a few points at the boundary. And it's very far from be being compact. Of uh, the Griffiths variety. So in the case, they are not compact, of course. And uh, an omega, the analog of the second thing is to, uh, you can uh, restrict to some curves. So it's a Shimura or modular curve. And integrate. And I am going to explain what this gives. So I'm going to to, uh, to start from a classical Picard modular form. So, uh, so in the non-compact case. Uh, with a unitary group. In this case, uh, the Picard modular surface can be uh, compactified by adding some CM elliptic curves. This is a toroidal compactification, which is more or less canonical in this, uh, in this situation. So this, you have a surface. And you add a certain number of CM elliptic curves at the boundary. And when you get, when you have a form, a parabolic form, you get a Fourier coefficient, Fourier Jacobi, I don't know the, the name. You simply, uh, so you have your curve. Uh, and your, vari your variety, the neighborhood of the curve, 
looks, uh, it looks like it's, it's fibered over the curve. And you, when, you, when you write the Fourier coefficient of, uh, in, in the direction of the vibration, you get uh, something which, is, which are sections, uh, not function, but section of some bundle, which I'm going to call L to the R. So L1 is the conormal bundle to the curve, and you, you get uh, some, uh, you get a family of section of some bundles. So <coughs> maybe I, at this time, I should say F, not to be confused. And <coughs> so uh, if you look at the corresponding form uh, on the, uh, of the, on omega over gamma, then I cannot, exp I have not the time to explain what uh, Kato and Usui have done, but they have constructed a compactification which, in this case, they add uh, elliptic curves, which are, in fact, the complex conjugate of the preceding ones, and also they add uh, some uh, multiplicative group. Uh, so, you know, it is not, the, the thing is three-dimensional. So you should expect a compactification by adding something which is two-dimensional, but in fact, you only add curves. So the, the fact, the thing is very far from being compact. And what you can do is the same. So you have, uh, you have your, uh, your, this time this is not, uh, in H0, it is in H1. But nevertheless, you can, you can express uh, you can write some kind of Fourier coefficient which are, so you restrict in the neighborhood of your elliptic curve, and you, <coughs> so you get something which are in H1 of the, this elliptic, the dual elliptic curve, and it turns out, so the, the picture, the picture is something like that. So this point is the elliptic curve that you have to imagine, uh, so this is a transversal uh, picture, you cut the elliptic curve, and in the neighborhood of this elliptic curve, the variety is, a, so I have, I have a cut, so it is a surface. And there is, there is a very uh, uh, non-algebraic part, which is something uh, which is concave, so which has cohomology uh, by itself. And you have an algebraic part, which is in fact the thing uh, to which I restrict the, my form. And in this situation, I get a conormal bundle, which is the dual of the preceding one. So you get something. Uh, you get that. You get uh, you get uh, classes in uh, on the on the dual on the complex conjugate elliptic curve, uh, which are dual to the preceding ones. And the fact is that those two things uh, coincide. Uh, so the proposition is that. Uh, uh, so, the Fourier coefficient C R and those gamma R, gamma R and C R correspond to each other by the composite. So you have plenty of strange isomorphisms in this talk. Uh, so the isomorphism, you want to go from the H0 to the H1. And the isomorphism is the following. This is isomorphic to its dual, to the dual 
of the edge here of the uh, uh, conjugate curve, the duality is with respect to a, um, to a some um, uh, this is the scalar product with respect to uh, some Hermitian structure on the air. So you can give a formula, but it is canonical in the sense that it is, uh, I don't know what it means exactly, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's as parallel curva curvature, and it is more or less uh, def uh, defined up to a scalar which you, you can normalize. And then you apply ser duality. Ser uh, duality between the edge zero and the edge one. And the composite, um, the composite is uh, is what makes uh, the Fourier coefficient in both on the classical side and the omega side uh, coincide with each uh, with each other. And moreover, this is uh, this transformation is rational over Q bar. That means uh, the, there is a the elliptic curve is defined over, so I don't want to be very precise on the field of definition, but everything is defined over Q bar. So it has a meaning to say that something is uh, rational here and here. And the, this, this transformation, because the, the scalar product of uh, rational uh, things is, is a rational thing. So it's. it's uh, so It is uh, uh, it is uh, this thing is a usual uh, 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 line, line bundle which defines theta theta function so it uh, gives a embedding uh, okay so in the by looking at uh, Fourier expansion I, the I get a satisfactory result. In the sense that uh, uh, the rationality, which is transferred from the classical forms, can be read simply at looking at the boundary. Uh, the, other th the other thing one can do is uh, restriction to Shimura curves. And this is a little bit uh, uh, different. So I'm going to just give a few words. Uh, so the, in fact, the only the idea is to integrate some um, some curves. On, uh, on this, uh, because and in fact we get horizontal curves in the sense that uh, those curves uh, satisfy the Griffith transversality condition, and so it's, it's very easy to to make a picture. So what I do is, for instance, I, I fix a line. Uh, this line is uh, SU11 orbit which has been rational in some sense. So it has been uh, fixed uh, with respect to the Q. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, some uh, uh, the, the intersection with uh, uh, group gamma has to be non-trivial. So for instance, you, you take the usual SU to one, you can take the line and 
uh, you can have uh, view SU21 as a group of uh, uh, things like this. So you get an orbit, and you look at the set of uh, flags which are like this. Uh, uh, the, the point varies on the line which is fixed. So this is one thing. Or there is also the du a dual situation where you, you look at the, the lines. So you take a fixed point, which here corresponds to the uh, orthogonal of this line. And you look at the, uh, all the, so in this situation, you get some parallel lines which intersect uh, the, the ball. So you, you when you go to the question by gamma, uh, so the set of the L like this constitute a curve, uh, which is in fact a Shimura curve, uh, can be a modular curve. And if you have your uh, your form omega as above, you can you can restrict to the curve, uh, and you get uh, something which is a cohomology class on some automorphic of uh, sheath on your curve. And the, to this thing correspond a curve uh, which is in fact the dual, which is a curve in X, which is this, this thing. Here you are on the outside of the ball. So in the plane, the outside of the ball is the same as the inside, which is not the case in dimension two. So the dual of Z, you have your, your point, with which I have called I before. So the dual of Z describes this thing. And you look at the IL, and you get another Shimura, uh, Shimura curve, which is the <coughs> which is uh, the, the dual of the preceding one, and you can restrict your form to this thing. And again, uh, again you can. So the, the the restriction here is uh, rational, and here you can. Uh, uh, the two things are related by a, a transformation, which is essentially the ma the same as above. So it is again a composite. Uh, it's, it's, it's built as before. So you have first uh, a scalar product. So this is a Peterson. Scalar product, which gives a duality between form uh, antilinear duality on, uh, on C, and then you apply third duality. So the, the shift you get is the dual of the uh, the dual and <coughs> so it works exactly the, the formally as above but the difference is that this thing is not rational because the Peterson product of uh, rational form is not Sorry. 
Yes, but the curve can be compact because I can. <laughs> oh, sorry. Otherwise, if the curve is not non-compact, you have to be careful and to do something. Yeah. Because uh, so we get some periods here. So uh, so the conclusion is that if you if you transfer the usual uh, structure, you get an x uh, to omega. You get the, the you can uh, test uh, rationality by looking at uh, a Fourier expansion along the boundary of the kato uzui compactification, and so it works uh, well. If you want to test uh, by integrating on curves, you have not to take the usual uh, uh, thing you, you imagine, the fact that the restriction is rational, but Uh, the rational structure you get on curves is the dual by the Peterson product of the, of the, of the rationality on edge zero. I was quite surprised uh, to find that because uh, um, both things, from the point of view of, uh, of uh, algebraic geometry, uh, those curves are horizontal curves. So this is the, the part of the, of the variety which corresponds to um, Uh, to, to, to algebraic geometry. And kato usui compactification is also a sort of compactification of, uh, of variation of, of uh, all structure. So I, I was surprised to find that the both things are not exactly um, uh, coincide up to, uh, up to some periods. And um, okay, so, uh, so at least for, uh, for uh, whatever comes from uh, uh, holomorphic or anti-holomorphic forms, one can understand more or less in this situation what means rationality. But for, uh, for non-holomorphic things, uh, it seems that whatever is horizontal do doesn't see the, the forms of this type. They don't have the, 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 the restriction seems to be... Uh, so the only way I know to, to integrate uh, is to... Uh, forms of uh, non-holomorphic type is to do something uh, uh, horrid, <laughs> to take vertical curves and then integrate. That's terrible, <laughs> but that's, that's uh, okay. I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, it's not possible to, the, the only thing I see is that you say that the form is rational if, if, you, s if you take this definition of, of what uh, of the uh, rational form via the, the Peterson product, but there is, no, there is no universal factor because it depends on the form and there is no, so it's, it's a little bit strange, but uh, what really works well is the, uh, Q, uh, Q expansion at the cusp. Uh. I do not know. <laughs>